Hello Taurus viewers. I'm sorry my videos are a little bit late. I will, this video might be a little bit shorter than my usual videos, but I will be back to my regular schedule on the 15th. So just bear with me. I'm sure I'll probably be posting before that too, but my videos should go back to being you know, their usual length on the 15th. Let's see what's going on. What is going on here? Okay, we have, I'm jealous. I'm afraid that you either already are or that you will end up dating somebody new. I was afraid of how quickly I was falling in love with you, so I ran away. Gossip and rumors played a role in our separation. You're so empathic, kind, and thoughtful. It's inspiring me to open up to you. You're my safe space, my frequent daydreams. Sometimes it feels easier just to live in this imaginary world I've created in my head. I think about you all the time. The nostalgia hurts deeply. I had a huge epiphany. Okay, so it looks like the epiphany they had is that they're aware that you are their soulmate or their twin flame, that you're the one. I think that and there might have been something with gossip and rumors here that played a role in your separation. I'm feeling like they were just, they were afraid of how quickly they were falling in love with you, though. They weren't used to that, so maybe someone kind of played on those spheres. But I feel like they're, it's almost like the energy I get is almost like they had two different ideas of who you really were in their head. And it might have been, you know, what people told them you were, or like maybe rumors, um, or just their own fears and insecurities. But they're seeing, I think they're seeing the truth for themselves. They're seeing that you're kind and you're empathetic and you're thoughtful. You know, they're starting to really think more and more about you. They're starting to fantasize about you. You know, it says you're my safe space, my frequent daydream. And they think about you all the time. The nostalgia really hurts them. So I almost feel like it might have been a situation where it was almost like when they had you, they felt like it was too good to be true. Like they almost like they looked for things to be wrong with you. Like everything was so I feel like everything was so perfect or like everything just with you. It's like you seemed so perfect to them. You know, you seem so like empathetic and kind and thoughtful and just angelic. Like you just had this light about you. Like you were just so patient and so kind so forgiving so loving you know you're just the kind of people you're, you're the kind of person that everyone wants to be around so I almost feel like like they wanted to believe that was the real you but some some part of them just kind of sabotaged it and thought like oh there's no way this could be real I'm sure they have a a dark horrible side I just haven't seen yet and I feel like they're kind of starting to finally realize that, you know, you're, you're being real with them. That is who you really are. You know, I almost feel like this is someone who's just, it's like they felt like it was too good to be true. They felt like you were too perfect. And now they're kind of realizing like, no, that's actually genuine. You're just not what they're used to. You know, so they're having these epiphanies on their own. I think that you really did all that you could for them. I feel like maybe some of you tried to, um, for this energy group, I feel like that like an angelic, very light, loving energy. So I feel like you guys are like empaths in this energy group. Like you're very empathic. I mean, a lot of a lot of people that are are you know drawn to psychic readings are empathic, of course. But I'm just saying that you guys are more than most. You know, like you just have this light about you and sometimes people will compete with you or people just don't understand that light. And I feel like that was the case with this person. It's like they didn't understand your light. They didn't know what that was. They didn't know how to control it. They didn't know how to predict it. They didn't know what to make of it. They weren't sure if you were be if you were just putting on a front and just trying to, you know, put your best foot forward or if that was who you genuinely were. You know, there might have been people around, too, that were jealous or people that just said, like, you know, like, oh, like, it's probably, you know, there's there's got to be something there. There's, they have to have some some flaws, some issues. And, yeah, of course you have flaws, but it doesn't mean that you're hiding a whole other personality. It's, it's weird. It's like for this energy group, it almost feels like they thought you were, like, hiding, like, a whole other personality. Like, you had hidden motives or you had this 
this other horrible side to yourself that they just hadn't seen yet. They were just kind of just waiting for the other shoe to drop, you know? And I feel like, you know, I feel like you did all you could. I feel like you really tried to support them. You tried to help them through their insecurities, through their traumas, through their issues, you know, you know, as an empath, it's like you want to try to help other people, you know, you, you feel that strong drive, and I just really feel like you did all you could. Like, you really put yourself out there for this person. You tried to support them. But it just seems like they they just wouldn't trust you. They just kept sabotaging it. They just kept waiting. They kept being very pessimistic and just waiting for something to go wrong, waiting for you to break their heart or waiting for you to betray them or cheat on them or turn out to be something, you know, like the opposite of, of what you were portraying yourself to be. And I feel like you kind of had to go your separate ways because it was almost like you were just, I know you weren't intentionally enabling them by staying with them, but it was almost just enabling them. I feel like you had this dynamic where it's like as an empath, um, it's like you, you kind of open them up is what I'm feeling. And I feel like they almost used you as, I don't know how, I don't know how to explain it. Almost like they used you as like a therapist or like they, like they they saw the opportunity to let loose and they over they overdid it it's almost like they wanted that it, like they got addicted to that attention and that motherly or fatherly energy that you had about you it's kind of what i'm feeling here it's like as an empath you have this very nurturing loving fatherly or motherly energy and they got addicted to that and so i think you guys kind of got caught up in this cycle where it's like you were babying them and you were taking care of them and you were, you know, giving them reassurance and you were being their safe space. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be someone's safe space, but it's a beautiful thing to be someone's space, safe space when they're actually like working on themselves and doing the work with you. You know what I mean? Like if you guys are healing together, that's a beautiful thing. But it seems like it was mostly just you healing yourself and you trying to heal them and them fighting you, kicking and screaming every step of the way. You know, it's like they got addicted to that energy. They got addicted to it. I know it sounds strange, but they got addicted to you being in a motherly or fatherly role. I feel like this person has, I, I don't know a nice way to say it, but I mean, a lot of us do. A lot of people do. It's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. But this person has mommy or daddy issues, honestly. There's not like, there's not another way to word that. Um... So it's almost like to in, to some degree you took the role of the parent, but in a romantic, I don't know how to explain that, but like in a romantic sense, I hope that, I know that sounds weird. I hope it makes sense. I, I know it sounds strange, but it's almost like you took a certain role, like you filled a role for them that they didn't have, they didn't have that role filled in childhood. You know what I mean? Like this person has a lot of very deep childhood wounds, lots of damage, lots of um, mental and or physical abuse from childhood. And so when you took that role of being the the protector and the nurturer, being the person to, you know, take care of them, be it financially, mentally, emotionally, you know, playing that role of like the mother or father, they got addicted to that. And so they wanted to stay in that role. And so I feel like they challenged you because they wanted to stay in that role. They didn't want to be an adult. They didn't want to be your equal. They wanted you to keep babying them and taking care of them. It's like they were they were trying to meet these these unmet needs that they had in childhood. It's like they were trying to meet those needs with you. I hope that makes sense. So it's almost like you took the role of like a mother or a father or a counselor. And it's like you guys got caught up in this cycle where your empathy kind of almost got the best of you in this connection. Um, and I just feel like, I mean, I feel like it's good that you backed off because that would have continued you know, you, you, you would have kept being drained as an empath. You would have kept, you have to be wary of psychic vampires. Not that this person is a psychic vampire. You know, I think this person might be a decent person who's just, you know, has a lot of damage that they need to heal. But I'm just saying that, that this person got addicted to you being in that certain role and they got addicted to the feeling of, you know, you chasing them and you taking care of them and you reassuring them you know, you telling them everything's going to be okay, all of that. And like I said, those are beautiful things, but those are beautiful things to do like with someone who's also doing the inner work by your side. And the thing is, this person was not doing the inner work themselves. They were just putting all that weight and all those burdens on you. 
You know, they weren't, they weren't meeting you halfway. They saw that you were a very powerful, very strong empath, and they saw that you would just take care of everything for them. And so they let you. You know, for some, maybe this person has been working, you know, nine to five jobs their whole life. And so with you, it's like they finally had a chance to just rest and just, you know, just be innocent and vulnerable. And so they they kind of took that energy and ran with it. And it it created a burden on you because at a certain point, you're like, I want a lover, not a son or a daughter. I want some, I want an equal. I want some, you know what I mean? Like you got caught up in this, um, this strange energy exchange where you constantly had to reassure them and baby them and take care of them. And they, um, they wanted to stay in that role and they wanted you to stay in the role that you were in. So they kept, you know, they kept acting out. They kept seeking reassurance. They kept trying to make you stay in that role. This person honestly probably needs counseling to get past that because you want someone that's your equal. Um, but I will say that, you know, you did the right thing by distancing yourself or if they broke up with you it's like you allowed that distance like you didn't fight for them this time around which I think is a really beautiful thing because you know it kind of forced them to grow up a little bit it forced them to realize that you're not their mother you're not their father they are an adult and yes they do have childhood wounds that they need to heal and you can support them and help them through that if they're working on it themselves but they also probably need a professional like a counselor or someone to help them with that you know what I mean? Um, but it, it's good because you were an, you didn't mean to be, but you were an enabler when you were in that, that energy exchange with them. So it's good that you took a step back because now they're really thinking about you. They're thinking about this energy and they have, they, it's like now that they don't have you as a crutch, they're forced to be strong on their own. They're forced to be an adult. They're forced to come to these conclusions on their own. And now they're having these epiphanies and they're realizing that, you know, you are the one. You are their soulmate. You are their twin flame. You are their best friend. Part of them wants to come knock on, on your door or intentionally bump into you somewhere that you they know you would be. So like you see what happens here, like when you're not chasing them, when you're not doing all the work for them, when you're not giving them all the reassurance, it kind of when you step back, it kind of forces them to to choose to either leave or to step up and and um, be an adult and chase you and show you the same energy that you were showing them for for months or years. Your energy draws me in. You're mesmerizing. You're beautiful inside and out. Yeah, it's like now they're now they're finding themselves. It's like now they're kind of they're 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 really they're finding their own strength. They're doing some soul searching now. I'm afraid you'll break my heart. It's hard for me to fully trust you. The situation involves children or childish energy. Yeah, some of them still have a childish energy about them, but they do regret letting you go. They regret leaving. It says they lied to themselves to convince themselves that it was best for for you, the two of you to go your separate ways. And you're so different than anyone I've ever met. You've helped me become a better person. So yeah, you kind of like lay out like the foundation and now it's like, now they're, they're being challenged on their own. It's like they had to go through this alone. Otherwise they would have kept using you as a crutch. You know, I hope that makes sense. And as always, if you want a private reading, just email me. My email address is right below in the description box below this video. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, any donations are appreciated too. My donation link is below. So I lied to you. Yeah, I feel like they lied about like, I almost feel like they pretended to be innocent or there's like certain things that like they, like they played dumb or they, they pretended not to know about certain things because they didn't want the responsibility anymore. It's like they wanted to just let you carry the burdens, let you carry the responsibilities. But I feel like they actually are aware of the telepathic communication and they are aware of the deep spiritual bond, um, even though they pretended like they weren't. You know, they're still just trying to figure out if they're brave enough for this kind of love. Yeah, they're going through a psychic awakening, a kind of like a rebirthing process, and they want to be open, honest, and vulnerable, and they want to tell you their secrets. You know, they had to go through this alone. They never, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you did the right thing. You, you, they would have never done this if they could have relied on you their entire life, like they had to be alone to do this, you know, and that doesn't mean that everybody has to be alone to do this kind of work. But for this, for this specific energy group, for your people, they had to be alone because otherwise, 
you know, they, like I said, they would have just kept using you as a crutch. They would have just put all their emotional baggage on you and not dealt with it themselves. So, you know, now they're being forced to, to not rely on you for answers. They're having to find their own answers. They're having to, I feel like this person was very impressionable too. Like they always followed, like, you know, like listen to rumors or like listen to other people's opinions. And now they're being forced to listen to their own opinions, to find their own voice. So this person still feels very childish to me though. I mean, this person still has quite a bit of growing to do. Um, they've come very close to messaging you. They start typing, but they end up thinking, they end up overthinking and, and end up deleting everything they wrote. I'm damaged. I don't know how to open my heart again. I've been fantasizing about you sexually. There's still like an Eight of Swords energy here a little bit where they kind of kind of playing the victim a little bit, but but stay in your power. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't force a child to be a real man or to be a real woman. You know what I mean? Like like this person's going to do this inner work and they're going to mature and grow up and be your equal on their own or they're not. You know what I mean? But like you can't push them to do it, you know? And I think that you've learned that lesson too as an empath. I'm romantic and I'm emotional. I usually hide it, but you bring out my softer side well. But you bring up my softer side. My feelings for you are stronger than I let on. And I often think about the last time we saw each other. I love you. And I'm being watched. I want to reach out, but there are, peop there are people around me. That's probably just a message for a couple of specific people. I'm working hard to remove the obstacles that keep us apart. I want to take things slow and get to know you better. For some, this might be like a third party situation where the person is um, being watched by the karmic and they're trying to reach out. This person is still learning how to separate their opinions from others and how they're, they're finding themselves. They're in, they're in a process of healing themselves and finding themselves right now and learning. It's like when someone's alone, like when someone's forced to survive on their own, they usually do because they have to, they have no other choice. So it's a really good thing. It's like this person has, you know, this person doesn't, the training wheels have been taken off. There's no more crutch. You know what I mean? It's like this person has to survive on their own now. They have to find their own voice on their own now. And for some, they're learning to stand up to toxic people in their life, which might include a toxic karmic. You know, so some of them are going kind of slow because they're trying to remove those obstacles. But, you know, take it as it resonates. And as always, like I said, if you want a private reading, my email is below in the description box. You know, because this is just like a general message, but I can go more in depth into your specific person, you know, very accurate channel details of, you know, what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what they're wanting, if there's anyone new coming in, just whatever you want to know about. So send me an email. It's dragonenchantress at awol.com, right in the description box below this video. Um, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and any donations are appreciated. My donation links are also below. Thank you guys for watching.